Hey now, today we're going to take a look at Melee, or Melee. Some people say Melee, I say Melee, same thing. Uh, from the publisher La Mame Games and designer Ricky Tata. Now you may not know those names, but you've certainly played or have heard of uh, their most popular game. I think the only other game that company and publisher have produced, uh, or publisher and designer have published up to this point, Coup which you may not even have seen the original version of Coup. I actually did. Someone in my group had the original version because it was a very, very small print run. Uh, but they that version was put on uh, Kickstarter and uh, picked up by Indie Board and Cards, the company that did the Resistance, and it was rethemed into the Resistance world, and it's like become super uber popular. It's like one of the number one fillers of 2014. Uh, Melee is also sort of a filler game. It's maybe... 20% more complicated than Coup, but it's got one of the greatest taglines ever. Nasty, brutish, and short, and I would think that's pretty apropos. It's a somewhat abstract game. Each player is like a feudal lord, and you uh, have, at the beginning of the game, you have a castle. There's territory next to you. You start off with some soldiers and some knights and some catapults, maybe, and maybe some special abilities, and you are trying to branch out into the world, take over as much territory as possible, possibly take over um, another uh, of your opponent's castles and therefore end the game. But you only have four rounds of play. You're doing it through the four seasons of the year, and that's it. So that's where the short part of it comes in. And, and the nasty, brutish part is totally trying to decimate your enemies. It sounds sort of run-of-the-mill, but there's an interesting couple of twists to this game that are definitely worth mentioning. So let's take a brief look at how the game is played, and then we're going to come back. I'll let you know what I think. Okay, I'm going to give you a brief overview of Melee. Now, the goal of this game is domination, but there's two different ways that you're going to go about doing that. The theme is actually fairly abstract. It's like your medieval feudal lords, but there's not really any context for that, so just kind of try to ignore that. At the start of the game, you each have control of a castle, and that's what these different colored player pieces represent on this map. And you are either going to try to be the first person to grab someone else's castle, in which case the game immediately ends, or you're going to go through all four rounds of play, uh, each representing the different uh, seasons of the year, starting in spring, ending in winter. At the end of winter, whoever has the most controlled territory is going to be the winner. Now, a couple things I'll point out right off the bat. This is a four-player map. If I were to flip this board over, and I'm not, there, there is a three-player map, which only has three castles, and therefore the territory looks a bit different. And then you have the two-player map as well, which is completely separate and for uh, actually has... A little cheat sheet for the game on the other side if you're playing with three or four players, which I thought was kind of cool. Uh, the other thing I'm going to point out, and I'm just going to show you here because uh, it, it seems nitpicky. I'll talk more about this in my overview. The rule book is fine, except that it has this godforsaken shadow type on some of the pages, and it's awful to read. And then if you go to the next pages, it's fine. And then if you go to the other pages, it's even worse. Okay. That's, that's my nitpick. I just wanted to show you that. I don't know why they did it that way. I'm sure it had to be a printing mistake. In any event, each player is going to get a set of their different colored markers representing the units that they're going to have the opportunity to put out on the map. They're going to get 15 gold from the stack, and they're going to get a set of these three action cards. Now, each, one, each player starts with a normal soldier, their weakest unit, in each of their castles. But you have an introductory build phase right before the first season of the year, the first round of the game, in which case you can build more units. When you build more units, you're gonna at the start of the game, you're going to either put them inside your, uh, you're gonna put them in, you can't do that, sorry, you uh, are going to put them into uh, the adjacent territories where your castle is. Um, so you have soldiers, and soldiers are good during the course of the game just for fighting, but they can only move and fight once when you activate them. Knights are, and they only cost you two gold to build. Knights are very expensive. They're six gold to build. However, you when you fight with them, they can just keep on going as long as they're not defeated. They can just fight and fight and fight and keep on rolling through their opponents. Um, camps can never move. Um, they have to be defeated, so there is like a garrison protecting them. But the benefit of them is that they give you an additional gold during the income phase for every camp that you have under your control. And then the catapults, they can never move either, but they can attack. And if they attack successfully, they obliterate everything in the adjacent territory of uh, the foe that you're fighting. 
and I'll explain how combat works in a minute. Now, if you don't want to do just the introductory rules, you can also, in addition to building in the, intro in the introductory phase, uh, vie for these special ability cards. You'll lay out a number of special ability cards equal to the number of players plus one, and then players are going to go around bidding on them or building during this initial phase. And whenever someone passes, they're out, and then whenever everyone passes, it's over. When you bid on cards, I'm not even going to go through the steps of illustrating it because it's very simple. You take gold together with one of your tokens, put it on one of the cards. In order for someone else to outbid you, they have to bid more. You can outbid yourself if you really want to and try to get these special abilities. So just for some examples, which we'll have better context later, you have stables. Your knights cost three gold to build instead of six. You have to do that during the build action. Pillaging. You gain two gold after each successful attack by your knights or soldiers. Uh, castle stores, you gain one gold every season. Planning, gain three gold after you build. And I'll show you one more. Uh, here we go. Foraging, each of your soldiers outside, uh, outside the castle gain one gold every season. So once you decide, uh, once everyone has a chance to build and potentially get special abilities, uh, then the game is going to begin. Oh, one last thing I'll say about people in spaces you can only have one of each type of unit in every space there there is that limit but you don't have that many units anyway so don't worry too much about it <laughs> once it gets into the normal course of gameplay well let's put out a few sample units just so we'll Okay, just a quick messy way to uh, put some stuff out there so I can show you some examples of how combat will work in a minute. The first thing you do every season of the game is bid for start player. You have a little start player card here, and this is simply a blind bid. Everyone is going to uh, take a, as many coins as they want in their hand. And by the way, when you're not blind bidding on things, coins and how much money you have are always public knowledge. But when you go to bid on turn order, everyone's going to take all their coins in the hand and you can mess with them under the table or whatever you want to do. And then everyone submits at the same time, shows what the coins that are in their hand. Whoever has the highest bid with turn order being the tiebreaker is going to win the first player card. The other players get to keep their bid. Only the person who actually won for first player has to sacrifice the money that they bid. Then you're going to go into choosing actions. Now each player has a set of the three, uh, the three same cards. Uh, one of them says tax, in which case you just take three gold. One of them is build, in which case you can build and place the units. Now, in the initial phase, you can only go adjacent to your castle, but from now on, you can build wherever you actually have units and adjacent to your castle, assuming those are not conquered by your enemies. And this, the building costs are the same, six gold for a knight, two gold for everything else. The last card that you have is move and attack. Now you have the opportunity to move and attack with your soldiers and knights, which are, unless you have a special ability card, they're the only units that can move. Like I said before, soldiers can only move and attack once, but knights can move and attack over and over again, assuming that they're not killed. Now, how does this whole attack thing work? And I think you'll be a little bit surprised as to how it works. You might be saying, well, there's no dice or anything, so how do you actually do this? In order to attack, you need to motivate your men with gold. And that's actually the terminology they use in the book. So I decide that I'm moving in here and fighting with my soldier. I have a bunch of gold. I'm going to take all my gold in hand. I let my opponent know how much I have first because it's public knowledge. But then I'm going to take it all in hand. And I'm going to secretly choose an amount of gold in my hand. And then my opponent has to guess. He has to guess, based on his prior knowledge of how much gold I have total, how much I actually chose in my hand. After he locks in his guess, I, his guess, I reveal, and if they were right in their guess, I lose my attacking unit and I lose my gold. If he was wrong, I destroy one of his units and I still lose my gold. So you lose your gold no matter what. You start by killing soldiers, then you move on to knights, and then you actually can... Uh, then you kill catapult, or I'm sorry, you have to uh, kill camps at that point. Now, killing soldiers and knights, they just go off the board. When you uh, destroy a camp, you actually replace it with one of your own. So if I had taken out this territory, I actually get to replace it with my camp. And then catapults that are there just get automatically taken over. They're no longer manned, and uh, then you exchange it with one of your own the same way that you do with camps. And that's how combat works. It's just blind guessing. Now, uh, the thing is, if you do this in the, the mountains, are a perfectly viable spot for you to take over. And if you're just moving your people into empty territories, you just get them. 
in the mountains and in your castles, those are fortified, which means that you get two guesses every time that someone attacks you. You guess twice and then someone has to tell you if either of those guesses were correct. And you get to do this for every unit that you have defending a spot, uh, the mountains or one of your castles. That's why the victory condition is, one of the victory conditions is taking out a castle, but that's easier said than done. And you have to spend money every time that you attack. So if you want to make multiple attacks on a turn, either with several soldiers or with a knight that's just going amok, running amok around the kingdom, you have to spend money every time. So you need a lot of money to do that. Now, the next phase of the game, after everyone takes their action card, uh, I'm sorry, I should back up a step. How this works is that everyone's going to choose an action card, put it face down, and then in turn order, each player will flip and then take their action until everyone's done that. Uh, so you're not going to know what everyone is going to do on their turns. But you could probably guess. They only have three choices. <laughs> uh, then you go into the income phase, and this is simultaneous. Everyone gets one gold for every camp that they actually have out on the board, and one gold for every area, in this case two areas, that have the plus one gold symbol on them. And then if you have any special ability cards that get you more gold, you can do that as well. Then you're going to advance the season marker. If no one has captured a castle, then the game goes on and on until we get to the winter phase. The winter phase is a little bit different in that you get two actions, in which case you're gonna choose two of your cards, put them down. When it's your turn, you get to flip over both cards and resolve them in any order that you wish. And if it gets all the way to that point at the end of the winter season, whoever has control of the most territories and only has their units there are going to be the winner of the game. That's Melee. Now, let's get to my final thoughts. Well, there's not much to say about the theme or the components of Melee. Uh, which I didn't expect because I remember the original version of Coup, the, uh, the previous game from this publisher, which also had sort of a plain looking, it was medieval, definitely designed to be medieval type artwork. So it was nothing too special. Not bad by any means, but just it is what it is. The game, it was all about just getting the mechanics of the game out there with the sort of everything else as a second thought. Same thing with Melee, but it's fine. It doesn't really dis detract from the game too much that the components are just meh and the artwork's just meh, what little there is. The one thing I'm really gonna complain about here is the rule book. The rule book has, and I'll show, I showed this in my overview, but the rule book has this awful shadowing in the text that is just, why? Why would you do that? It doesn't make any sense. It looks awful. I have to believe it was some sort of printing error. They, they, they can't have willingly done that, and I think they just signed off on the proof without looking at it. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know, but it's terrible and it was giving me a headache while I was reading it. But mercifully, the rules are short, succinct and to the point, And it's very easy to learn if you can get over that hump. Uh, th and that's the thing. The game is very simple. It, it can seem a little weird at first, but it's, it's, it's actually one of those instances where you read the rules and you're like, huh, that's really it. <laughs> that's the thing. And that's where, again, the short part comes in on the tagline on the box. But that's fine. This, the thing about this game is that uh, someone in my group pointed out that this is a filler. This is one of the best, he, he called it one of the best fillers that I had. And I was like, filler? I don't know about that. It took us probably 45 minutes to play our first game of this, which seems really long for this type of game. But then we played it again. Uh, I played it with a different group and it was 20 minutes. And I'm like, huh, okay, I can see this as a filler. Because once you get uh, the concepts underneath you and once, uh, if you're playing with the right group who understands immediately like what you're doing and how simple it is, yeah, the game sings along pretty quickly and, and to its benefit. I think the game, if the game was longer than what it was, it would seriously detract from the experience. But as it is, it definitely lives up to its tagline. You are right in each other's faces right off the bat. And it, there's a line, there's an even better line in the rule book that says that the game can end suddenly and violently. And that is absolutely true. <laughs> One of the games that we played went all the way to the winter season and someone won. It was actually me, haha. -ha. But <laughs> the other game that we played ended in the second season because someone just made a mad dash with their knight into someone's castle and that was the end of it. So it that can happen in this game and you have to be prepared for that too. And the reason why some crazy stuff like that can happen is because of the combat mechanic in this game, which I will say right now, and you probably know this if you watch the overview, will either determine whether you are interested in this game or are going to completely disregard it. And there were people that I played with that were like, 
Are you kidding me? That's the worst thing ever. I think it's very interesting and it actually, it was fun for me. I don't know how to describe it, but you're, you're guessing. It, that's all that it is. It's, it's pure guessing. And your money is public information the entire game. If it was otherwise, it would be broken. But because your money is public information, you declare a battle, you hide your money, and then it comes down to guessing. But it, to me, it, act, it that sounds so weird and so counterintuitive, but it makes perfect sense to me. It makes sense to me that number one, as the rules say, your men are motivated by money. And if you wanna think of it, if you wanna like get rid of the abstractness of it, you can say, well, you're buying cool equipment for them and you're buying, you know, each soldier token represents a lot of soldiers. So you're buying more soldiers, but your opponent never really knows how many. They know you're very wealthy, but how, how wealthy, how much wealth are you willing to spend on this battle? So thematically, even though the game is not thematic, that makes sense to me. Uh, so I don't need to be sold on that aspect of it. And as far as how it actually works mechanically, it's pretty freaking interesting because it, there's so much, like you can calculate on the board, okay, he's attacking me. He the, Just winning this battle and killing one of my soldiers or my knights isn't gonna be enough. He needs to take out my base too. So he can't commit too much money. He may only have five gold, but if I just guess, but he doesn't, he's gonna think that I'll guess that he's gonna do one, so he won't do one, he'll do two or three. Or will he think that? You know, it's this weird, like, sort of princess bride back and forth of trying to outguess your opponent. And it represents the uncertainty of war so well that it's, I found it a lot of fun, even when I was on the bad end of that. Um, and I, it sounds like I'm making this more epic than it is, and it's not that epic, but I would love to see this mechanic or a variation of it in other games. Maybe there has been, and I just haven't played it, but it's so interesting to me. But again, if the idea of winning combats by guessing coins in someone's hand does not appeal to you, stay away from this game because that is the main crux of the game. Yeah, there's other little things about what well, the units have different powers, knights can keep moving and catapults can obliterate an enemy. And that stuff is cool and getting gold with camps and taking over the strategic points on the map to give you more money. Okay, but really none of that is all that terribly interesting. It's the battles that are interesting. And like I said, this is designed to be in your face right away. No turtling, no nothing. If you're turtling, you're not gonna win. Even if someone leaves you alone, you're either not gonna have the territories required to win by the winter season, or you're not taking a castle like someone else will inevitably do. So uh, you have to be prepared for that, that this game is very interactive in a very combative way, and that there's guessing in the game. But I like how it works. I like that the representation of you being in a stronghold or one of your castles or the mountains is that you get two guesses, which makes it even more like tense for the attacker and encourages them to have even more money. But again, it still comes down to guesses, so you never know. I like it a lot. I, I really do. I want to, even as I'm talking about it, I want to play it again. I don't think it's the greatest thing ever. It needs a facelift. It needs a new rule book. And I would love to see it be more thematic. I want to see more expansions for it. But still, as it is, I think it's a lot of fun. It's definitely one of the most unique games that I have, for real. Um, and I would encourage, if they ever release it domestically, I encourage you to check it out. I Oh, I have to say right here, um, this was actually sent to me by a viewer. So I, I won't mention his name in case he doesn't want me to, but thank you so much because this was a very cool experience. And uh, I I hope that more people get to check it out because it's, it's nothing like Coup and it's not like a lot of other combat games that I've played. And I'm not sure if it's a filler or a lightweight game or what, but it's definitely unique. My name is Nick, this has been Board Game Brawl, and I'm reminding you to get out there and game every day and every way. Take care.